Well, it's time for Community Corner, where we're going to highlight those stories that teach, inspire, and help us to learn a little bit more about our neighbors here in Metro Atlanta. First, you know, everyone deserves to feel safe at home, right? Well, that belief launched a new nonprofit organization here in Georgia that is putting words into action in low-income communities across the metro. 11 Alive's Kaylin Ross shares how Star C is changing what it means to be home. Now it's time to love these Audrea Reese says investing in children is always worth it. The apartment community is better. The school is better. There's less coming and going in the neighborhood. You can keep an eye on who's there. The executive director of Star C says the nonprofit started by offering free after school care to kids at low income apartment complexes in Atlanta. But now they're launching Star C Select to help the entire family. Make that community a better place to live. And when the community is a better place to live, obviously that's better for the landlord. So everybody wins in this situation. The new program is open to properties in Clayton, DeKalb, Cobb, and Fulton counties, and will provide in on-site job training, health screenings, and parenting classes. The nonprofit is launching with the help of a million dollar grant from United Healthcare. The research shows that, you know, about 80% of what impacts a person's overall health, it happens outside of the doctor's office. And so in some cases, affordable and safe housing is one of the biggest health barriers that people have. CEO Mike Miner says partnering with Star C just makes sense. There's only so much that you can glean from a medical chart. And in some cases, what happens in a person's home? What happens at school? What happens at work and in between? It makes a big difference on how you approach your health. The programs will start rolling out at properties across the metro this summer. Reporting in Atlanta, Caitlin Ross, 11 Alive News. Next, we're going to share a story about a Georgia man with cerebral palsy who says that he grew up being bullied, but now he's getting the last word and a lot of last words to help a lot of people out there. Jonathan Patterson says in elementary and middle school, the kids used to tease him for being in a wheelchair and for the way that he talks. He says it gave him low self-esteem. So whenever he felt depressed or angry, he wrote those feelings down on paper and luckily he just kept on writing. Now he has a children's book called I Was Made Special, which addresses mental health and low self-esteem. He says the writing process helped him to start to feel more comfortable in his own skin. I don't like it, the word disability. Cause, the, Cause when you use this, that prevent anything come after it bad. Like disadvantage and all that. I like the term differently able. There you go. I like that too, Jonathan. And you can find Patterson's books right now in Barnes and Noble. And he says that he's now working on another book called Rolling with Friends. And he hopes to have that book complete in the next year or two. A set of twins in Georgia are finding out that they are indeed the strongest link. After they say their win on NBC's Weakest Link has changed their lives forever. 11 Alive's Faith Jesse has their story. Congratulations, Jesse <laughs> This is the moment the bald twins say changed their lives for the better. Last Thursday, Jessica and Nina Bald took home more than $50,000 on NBC's The Weakest Link. The Metro sister duo answered the call for twins to go on the game show, making one of their childhood dreams come true. We kind of had our own strategy going, but when it was actually starting to work, we were like, I think we can actually win this. We got really in game mode. You can see it on our faces. There was no more smiling about once there's three people left in the game, you can see our faces like <laughs> very serious. Now they say winning the money has changed their future. The twins are the youngest of seven. They tell us as kids, they grew up in impoverished circumstances, going from house to house, living with family members. They were the first in their family to graduate from college and move from Waycross to Atlanta. We were always small town kids with big dreams, always wanting to make it out of the small town and move to the big city and make something of our lives. So that definitely was the catapult to it all. Um, the realization of our dreams coming true, basically um, for us, it was in that moment. The twins tell us they want to take their earnings and begin their entrepreneurial journeys. And now they hope their winnings will grow and create generational wealth for their families for generations to come. April is National Donate Life Month, so this is the time to raise awareness and encourage others to become organ donors. And one man in Atlanta is doing exactly that. 
if if you're thinking about it, you should probably do it. It's it's really one of the most important things I've ever done. And if I could, I would absolutely do it again. In 2021, Zach Eister made a decision to donate his kidney. The father of three didn't know anyone personally in need of one, so he donated it to a stranger. In the November of 2021, Zach went to Piedmont, Atlanta for surgery. And six weeks later, he was back to his normal routine. Since then, Zach has been encouraging others to donate as well. One of the biggest pain points for people is my life is going to be irreparably altered and damaged for having done this. And it's a sacrifice in that regard. And it doesn't have to be. By the way, we also spoke to Dr. Eric Gibney from the Piedmont Transplant Institute. And he says people considered healthy enough to donate a kidney have a low risk of long-term complications in the future. A local mom is now counting her blessings after a sudden health scare. 11 Alive's Liza Lucas shows us how others help save her life and just how important life-saving training can be. Tell me exactly what happened. I don't know, my mom, she's, she's, she's not moving. A terrifying call to 911 and a mother's life in jeopardy. Is a defibrillator available? Since I want to get it now and tell me when they have it. Only thing I remember is just waking up in the hospital. Chanel Wood remembers little about her sudden heart attack, but the moment is carved in her son's memory. The boys called 911, checked for a pulse, and listened as a Grady EMS dispatcher told Chanel's husband how to perform CPR and save his wife's life. So you have to count out loud with me, sir. Okay, one, one two, two, three. three. So, you like doing CPR on here. The CPR buying time until help arrives. That's what we're trained for. We're trained to walk them through it on the phone. It's, it's definitely a, a moment and uh, becomes very intense. And it's a rare moment when the two worlds meet. Chanel getting the chance to say thank you to the first responders and the voice on the other end of the line. We get, I want to say, thousands of calls and we never get a chance or opportunity to actually have conversations with uh, anyone on the other side of the phone. It's a conversation Chanel doesn't take for granted. I don't know where my family would be right, right now without them. There are just so many heroes in that story, right? So like the oldest son called 911 after the younger boy saw their mom not responding at all. Chanel's husband performed the CPR. That had to be heart wrenching. And the first responders and the dispatchers are all part of that chain of survival. And the boys also just wanted to say thank you to everyone telling us their mom is incredibly special.